Hey all and welcome back to Fuzzy Dutzy Gaming and a new video covering everything you need to know about League starting successfully as a ranger looking to transition into lightning strike. Now the guide's going to be long and it's going to split into parts covering the individual acts and the early stages of mapping and also how to progress your gear quickly. And this was done on a fresh SSF League start and to keep things fair I've not interacted with the League mechanic at all during leveling. Now you'll notice in the video there are League characters in town that shouldn't be there and that's because my recording for the first three acts got corrupted so I had to then create a second character to get through these first three acts and I couldn't migrate the character I had because I still want to progress and bring out a part two of the video but I did start with a blank inventory for both characters. Now in short the leveling build uses Spectral Helix as single target and Frost Blades to clear and it was an absolute breeze. I've tested several variants of leveling from Toxic Rain and respecking in maps to pure lightning strike. Toxic Rain struggled with DPS in maps as you can only go so far on the tree because you only get a certain amount of respec points and the lightning strike was just horrible to level with all the way through. Now all the parts are timestamped so feel free to jump around the video as needed but let's start with Act 1. So once you get to Lion Eyes Watch, sell anything that you don't need. You need to buy a Corroded Blade which is a two-handed sword. You need a Green Green Link and then you need to buy Splitting Steel from Nessa. Link Splitting Steel to Pierce and then head off. Once you pick up Onslaught, swap Pierce out for Onslaught. If you do have a green, green, red, feel free to buy and add in Chance to Bleed to these links. Once you get to level 8, take added Cold Damage as your reward and then buy Decoy Totem and War Banner. They both only cost a scroll of wisdom each. If you find a better two-handed weapon on the ground, obviously swap to this, but it's not needed and I would not spend currency on it. For Brutus, ideally you want a three link of either green, green, green or green, green, red. Your third link would either be Chance to Bleed or Added Cold. Now Brutus is quite an easy fight. He's basically got three main moves. He's got a chain hook, he's got a three melee smash and he's got a sunder type attack. The only danger is the sunder attack because it's quite dark and blends in with the scenery. Essentially it's just a wave that goes along the floor and can almost one shot most characters. The easiest way to do this fight is you put your decoy totem down, wait for him to use chain hook and then it will automatically do his three melee slams that are quite slow and that gives you a good window to DPS. You basically just kite him around, dropping your decoy totem whenever you can, and attacking him once he's chain hooked, and you can basically avoid him totally. Once you've got Brutus down, between here and Merval, you need to pick up the following. You need your Spectral Helix gem, which you get at the caverns, which is one orb of transmutation. You need two cold rings, which are sapphire rings. These can either be bought for three wisdom scrolls each, or you can trade a blue gem and an iron ring to a vendor and that will give you a sapphire ring. You also want an all claw and the best way of doing this is either finding it on the ground or once you get to level 12, keep checking the vendor to see if they're selling one and they cost one orb of transmutation. If not, a claw you find on the ground will do but all is the best one. And then to craft this claw, you either need an alchemy orb, an essence, or you need a blacksmith's whetstone and a magic rustic sash. Use whatever you find on your claw and it will give you some extra DPS. If you don't find any, you can just run it as it is. It will just make Merv out a little longer. So if you have managed to find a claw by either crafting it, have some fizz damage or you found one with a bit of Ellie damage or fizz damage, Merv is going to be a breeze. She really can't kill you unless you play really badly because with a mix of cold resistance from the rings and life on hit from the claw, you'll stay alive as long as you don't stand permanently in one of her degen zones. All you want to do is place your totem one side of Merval, stand the other, and then just hold Spectral Helix and repossession when needed. Don't worry if At One takes you a little longer than normal, as you might need to kill a few more mobs and open some chests to make sure you get the gear to take on Merval, but it makes this fight easy, and the claw that you've crafted will also see you all the way through Act 2 and most of Act 3. So Act 2 should be really quick. So once you get out, head straight to the old fields and complete the den quest if you need a second Quicksilver Flask. Then go through to the crossroads and straight to the Chamber of Sins. Don't forget to do the lab trials in Chamber of Sins and the Crypt. I normally save the Crypt until Act 3 and hope I have better movement speed as the travel time can be quite long. In Chamber of Sins, kill Feloditus and then as your reward, collect Herald of Ice and then buy Herald of Lightning. If you can't equip Herald of Lightning due to int issues, you can pick up a Lapis Amulet in a quest in a bit. At this stage, I then do the Bandits as I like the Mana Regen and the Resistances for Weaver. So I'll go and kill Oak, kill Crichton, and then help Alira. 
When you help Valyria, you unblock the entrance to the Western Forest, pick up the skill points, and then head into Weaver's Chamber. Kill Weaver, and then collect Trinity as a reward. For now, just slot it in a weapon slot to start leveling, as we're not going to use it yet. At some point, you also want to buy faster attacks and link it to Whirling Blades. So from here, you just head through to Vol Ruins and to the boss. Again, use Decoy Totem to distract the boss, and then dispatch him before leaving for Act 3. In Act 3 is where we start looking for four links, but you don't need them. The act's really easy on a three link. What you do want to start doing though is looking for claw upgrades. Again, either using the Fizz Damage Recipe, Alchemy Orbs, or Essences. Now in this act, Ellie Damage will start to be better than Fizz Damage, so Ellie Damage on your claws is ideal. So from here, you head to the Crematorium, beat Piety before returning to town to collect the Sewer Key. Head through the sewers and collect all the busts. There's always one bus to the left of the waypoint and then two to the right hand side. Complete the lab trial after picking up the marketplace waypoint, head to battlefront, pick up the ribbon spool and then on to the docks. Here we collect the thematic soul fight and if you're under level 25 I'd recommend leveling to at least that level before leaving the docks as it's a really good zone for leveling. From here head into the temple, collect the talc and the lapis amulet if you need it before going to the sewers and then heading on to the ebony barracks. Now here we're going to ignore Gravisius as we don't need his rewards and we just head straight into the temple. Kill Piety and collect the skill point in town. Again, check for four links. What we'll do is I will cover the four link options after Act 3 because there's a few different variations. Once you're done, go to the gardens and get the waypoint, collect the lab trial and then head to the library as there are some gems that we need here. So complete the library quest and then take Fortify as a reward then if you have a chance orb by inspiration and also by added lightning. Level these in weapon swaps. We're doing this because it gives us a couple of different options for our four links. Head through the rest of the act, kill Dominus and then exit to act four. Now before we cover off act four, I just want to talk quickly about the four links. So our aim is to have a four link of Trinity, Spectral Helix, added cold and inspiration. We're going to drop Onslaught as we get that from our first Ascendancy. However, until we hit Act 5, do a bit of respecking and pick up Mana Leech, we can't run Anger, which means it's difficult for us to balance Trinity because we're running Added Cold. So I'd recommend either running Helix, Added Lightning, Added Cold and Inspiration, or Helix, Faster Attacks, Added Cold and Inspiration. When you pick up a second 4-link, we're also going to run Frostblaze as a clear skill, as Helix can be a bit clunky. For this, we're going to use Frost Blades, Fortify, Ancestral Call, and Added Cold. Now we already have Fortify, and we can buy Frost Blades, Added Cold, and Ancestral Call all from the Act 1 vendor. Really, just transition to Four Links whenever you can, but ideally you do want a Four Link Helix for Lab and for Belly of the Beast. In Act 4, make your way to the Crystal Veins. At this point in the game, I would start checking vendors every level for Four Links as we need two. And then when you have at least one for Spectral Helix and it's four linked, then complete lab. Izaro is pretty easy, we can just circle around him using Helix, you can use Decoy for safety, and you can put a Curse or Sniper's Mark on him. At four may take longer, as this is when we transition to two times four links, so you might have to do a bit of farming and vendor shopping. At this point for more damage, you can get Anger from Act 3 and run this as your only aura, and you can also get Sniper's Mark from Act 3 to use on bosses. Once you're through lab, take Rapid Assault as your first Ascendancy. To me, this was the most difficult act as the damage started to fall off, but that's probably because I wasn't able to upgrade my claw and I still had the claw I was using at the end of Act 2. Kill the Trinity bosses and then dispatch Malachi and then move on to Act 5. Our goal in Act 5 is basically to hit level 45, as this is when we respect the claw nodes and start breezing through the content. So in Act 5, make your way through to Chamber of Innocence and you want to farm here until you're level 45. This is a really, really good area for farming and you'll level up to 45 in no time at all. At this point, you'll also need to do any respec quests that you may have missed. So that would be Act 1 in Fetid Pool and Act 2 for the Crypt area. We're now going to respec as shown here. You're essentially getting rid of the projectile nose and a few leading up to it and then respecing up to the claw wheel and all the way around to Soul Raker. We've now got Mana and Life Leech, so you can add an extra Aura in. I recommend Precision to cap off our accuracy and start building our Critical Strike Chance. You also want to farm for a Claw here, or the materials to craft one, as you'll need better than the Act 2 or 3 Claw. You either want a Gouger, or if you've hit level 46, a Gut Ripper. 
You're looking for basically, ideally, a claw with two types of LE damage or one type of LE damage and attack speed. If you can get this, the next few acts will be a cakewalk. Hit up any strong boxes, essences and rares that you come across when farming the Chamber of Innocence. You will also by now have unlocked some LE damage crafts, so you can always craft elemental damage onto a claw if you find one with decent damage or decent attack speed. In the footage you can see in the background against Katava, this is the claw that I was using. It's pretty garbage, but it was still enough to insta phase it. So make short work of Katava and then move on to Act 6. So from Act 6 to 10, there's really not much to go through. You just progress through the campaign as normal, looking for gear and weapon upgrades. Keep an eye out for Vile Orbs, as every time you find one, go back to the At One vendor, buy a Lightning Strike and use the Vile Orb on it. Repeat until you get a Vile Lightning Strike and then put this in your weapon swap to level. Your aim for links whilst progressing through the axe are Spectral Helix, Trinity, Added Cold and Inspiration. For clearing, you want Frostblade, Ancestral Call, Fortify and then either Added Cold or LE Damage with attacks, whatever your links allow. You want a Castle and Damage taken at level 3. Immortal Call at level 5 with an increased duration. For movement speed, you want Whirling Blades, Faster Attacks and Fortify. The Fortify is optional. You then want a Curse or a Sniper's Mark. And then for Auras, you want Anger and Precision. Now this will comfortably see you through the rest of the Axe. Feel free to farm for a good claw once you get to Blood Aqueducts and take advantage of completing whatever the lead mechanic is. Since I don't know what this is in 316 or where it will appear, I've not touched the lead mechanic until I've got to Maps. Now this setup breezes through the early white maps, so what we'll do now is close the video out by looking at how to upgrade your gear during the early maps. Now your first aim is obviously to get a 5 link, so keep hold of a deck space that drops with 6 sockets and then hit any harvest that you find and go for the socket link plant. It won't be long before you get the 5 link one. At this stage you can go back to Act 2 and buy Nightblade support and slot this as your 5th link in your chest. For claws, you need to make sure Imperial Claws are highlighted in your filter, and when you pick them up, use any of the following essences. You want to use either Wrath, Hatred, Anger, Loathing, or Zeal. You're looking for something with attack speed, crit chance, and some Ellie damage. You can always craft the one that you're missing at the crafting bench. Now this is a claw that I'm currently using in yellow maps and is absolutely melting everything. When you're progressing through the tree, once you've got piercing shots and point blank, you can swap to Vile Lightning Strike. To do this, I specced out of the Onslaught nodes as they were really only there for us to map really, really quickly to gear up. In Lynx, I would also swap Inspiration for Ancestral Call as it helps with clear if you get the distance right. I'm pretty sure this skill double hits. You can tell how many hits you're getting on an enemy by the amount of lightning striking up from the attack. With a bit of practice, you'll understand where you need to position to get the maximum number of hits. Once you've got a 6 link, you can then add inspiration back into your supports. Now this setup should easily see you through mid to high to yellow maps and probably into red maps. And then our goal from here is just to get our life up and our evasion up and hunt the uber lab trials. I'm not going to go through any Atlas stuff as this is all changing in 3.16, but I will bring out a video about that once the full details are known. I have to say in conclusion, this is one of the easiest and most laid back leveling I've ever done and everything felt really quick and really easy. With all the onslaught nodes and using frost blades to clear, you can easily get through the campaign in five to six hours. I'm currently about 12 hours in, well into yellow maps, and I've got the first eight conquerors down. Part two is to follow when I look to push into red maps, so watch this space. There's a full level in POB in the description, along with notes on gear, gems, and also when and how to respect your points. Now, I hope this has helped, Feel free to leave any comments, questions or recommendations down below and until next time, take care and see you in the next video.